What's going on, guys? Today, uh, my name is Bosox, and today we're going to be doing a new type of video that I've never seen before done in Destiny. However, I've seen it done in other places, and I want to try it here. So, one of the things I do watch on YouTube is I watch a lot of, um, like, Yu-Gi-Oh! card game videos. I don't actually play the game, but I watch a lot of videos about it. I don't know why, but I like I enjoy watching videos about it. It's something I used to play a long time ago when I was a kid. But um, one of a, a really popular style video in that community of like Yu-Gi-Oh! and stuff is to react to a new ban list. So it's like a live reaction to a new ban list. And today I want to try that out here in Destiny. Um, Last week in the TWAB, Bungie said that this week they're going to be doing a bunch of sandbox updates. Uh, we're going to get Shadowkeep sandbox updates uh, written out for us in today's TWAB. Um, so if that's the case, this video will probably go live. And then uh, if not, then I'll probably just scratch this whole video idea entirely. And I'll save it for some other time. So if it's a good TWAB. So we'll go there right now, actually. Bungie.net. I haven't seen anything from it. If it's a good TWAB, you'll see this video um, probably Friday. And then over the weekend, I'll get the special kind of video out that I was... Uh, the other video I was talking about in my previous video. I'll get that one out to you guys. Because that one, I think, is going to be pretty important and pretty interesting. So... Anyway, we're going to live react to this week at Bungie. This is not going to be a regular thing because these things usually aren't that interesting or interesting enough to go over, but I felt that this one would be a special case. So, if we go to this week at Bungie, let's see. Uh, talked a lot about how Shadowkeep will change the way Destiny is played. Um, we'll have more to say before October 1st uh, about how the game is going to evolve. There might even be a final pre-launch Bungie Vidoc. Okay, so we'll get a Vidoc maybe about year three. That would be kind of cool, um, but that's not guaranteed. It looks like this is the roadmap. So if we look at this roadmap, we've got the raid launch and the Vex Offensive. Then we have, what does that say? Uh, Legend Nightmare Hunts. Oh, Hero and Legend Nightmare Hunts. Okay. Master Nightmare Hunts and Iron Banner the following October, the following week in October. So... This comes out on Tuesday, and then this is the following week. So it gives you a little bit of time to power up and stuff. We've got the Leviathan Breath quest. Okay. Festival of the Lost. Okay, well, that one will be interesting because um, previous Festival of the Lost have been nicknamed Festival of the Cost. So we have a dungeon launch. Okay, so that would be like a Shattered Throne type thing. And a new PvP mode called Momentum Control. Okay, pretty good. Interesting there. Then we have the Trace Rifle Exotic Quest. So this is telling me that you can't get this at launch. And that this also isn't the Raid Exotic, which people were kind of speculating. Because at PAX, this was in the collection tabs with a bunch of the other Raid weapons. So that was probably just an early uh, version of the Raid. And then our first raid challenge. What the heck is that? Huh. That would be cool. That's in November. Okay. That's after this trace rifle. And then Vex Offensive Final Assault. So this will be the final boss of the Vex Offensive, which is like the new endgame activity. So we've got a pretty packed uh, October and early November. That's pretty nuts. The dungeon launch is going to be really cool. That'll be fun to see if it's sol It's probably soloable, um, like Shattered Throne, so that'll be really cool. I do want to get my uh, Shattered Throne solo uh, out to you guys. I did it on console, but I want to try it again on PC, so maybe we'll do that before Shadowkeep launches, but that's really cool. New dungeon, that gets me excited. So here we go. This is why we're here. Uh, last week, we did a bit of a deep dive on upcoming changes to abilities in Shadowkeep. This week, we'll be giving a patch note preview on how your weapons will be fine-tuned. So this is just weapons. Okay. For this pass, the team put some love into a few exotics that may have been collecting dust in your vaults. 
On top of that, a bit of tuning has been done in how damage is applied to different targets in PvE environments. Okay, we're going to be mostly looking at these in a kind of PvP mindset, but PvE is always not, uh, PvE buffs are always nice. So, in terms of how these changes will impact your PvP experience, a few weapons and archetypes are being buffed, with some seeing more aggressive range fall off to give breathing room to scout rifles and other weapons. Ooh, that sounds like pulses are getting a bit of their range taken off. So let's see. So, weapon changes in general. I wonder if, let's just, those are exotic weapons perks. Okay. So it looks like this is just weapon stuff, which kind of throws a plan in my video for Saturday. So I'm not sure what we're going to do there. Let's see. Weapon change in general. Weapon mods are now treated as reusable unlock unlocks instead of consumables. Any mods you have in your inventory will be converted to unlocks. Okay, so this is really, really good. This is going to work the same way Armor 2.0 does. And that's really cool because it just means that if you want to test out, like, let's say you want you had a recluse. For This is an example for me. If you had a recluse and you wanted to try backup mag on it, and then you were, weren't feeling the backup mag, and you changed it to something else, you won't essentially lose that, waste that backup mag per, uh, mod. So that's good. This gives players the opportunity to play with different mods more frequently. Yep, you can change your mods constantly. If the only copy of a mod you have is already in a gun, you will need to reacquire one to unlock it. Okay, so stop modding your weapons, especially if you only have one mod left for that. So, all right. Auto rifles receiving a PvE damage increase between 30 and 25% depending on combatant rank. <clears throat> that's really good. Auto rifles kind of suck in PvE right now, so that's really good. Bows, PvE damage increased by 31% against minor enemies and 26% against major enemies. Okay, so bows also getting a buff. This is good. Fixed an issue where bow draw times were displayed incorrectly in the inspection screen. I'm not sure what that means, but okay. Hand cannons, here we go. PVE damage against minor enemies increased by 30... They're increasing PVE damage in hand cannons? Holy crap. Okay. That kind of... That surprises me a lot. Um, because normally... Um, uh, normally, everyone's using a hand can right now. I guess people are using a lot of recluse and mountain top, but hand cans are already pretty good. So, lightweight and adaptive hand cannons use a new firing animation while aiming down sights. This change was made to increase weapon accuracy when firing these weapons as fast as possible. So, example: currently, players can shoot faster than the recoil animation of 140 and 150 archetypes. So while the hand can looks to have fully reset from recoil, the following projectile will be shot as if the weapon has still in a recoiled state. Huh. I think this is the stuff people are talking about how hand cannons felt better on controller and on how they think that they could feel better on console. Okay, so they are actually changing um Oh, what are they doing? The change was made to increase what lightweight hand cans use a new fire. Okay, so it's a brand new firing animation. Okay, so this is really good for console players, especially. I think this also affects PV or PC players as well. But this may make it so that your 140s and 150s are actually decent on console. Reduced the effect. Reduced the effect the range stat has on damage range fall off for this weapon archetype. Reduce the effect. The range stat has on damage range. Huh. Okay, so I guess your range stat affected your damage range fall off, your effective range, essentially. I don't know what that means. Does that mean the range stat's useless now in our uh, toolbar thing for guns? Machine guns. PvE ident against minor enemies increased by 25%. Jeez, they're buffing everything. What the heck? Increase the effect of damage range fall off on this weapon archetype. Increase the effects of damage range fall off. So I don't know if that means that you'll be experiencing range fall off at closer distances, or if that means that it's going to be more effect. It's going to remain effective at long ranges. I think this means that at longer ranges you're going to see some damage fall off uh, faster. So that's pretty good because I know that. 
something like Hammerhead kind of dominates Gambit from range because there's just no recoil and no damage fall off. So that's pretty good. I think that's a good change if that's what I think it is. Pulse Rifles. PvE against minor enemies increased by... Holy crap. Why are minor enemies getting screwed in this patch? What? What the heck is going on? Okay. Uh, I guess we're just getting a flat damage buff against red bar enemies in this in the game. Increase the effects of damage range fall off on this weapon archetype. So okay, so that that's the same wording here. I guess you're get, these two weapons are going to experience range fall off at closer distances now, which kind of makes sense because. Currently, there was really no reason to use a scout rifle because pulse rifles were so good at range. Archetype-specific damage changes impacts both PvE and PvP gameplay. Rapid-fire pulses now deal 14... Oh, jeez. Now deal 14 slash 23.8 base slash precision damage. Previously, it was 13... Okay, so, so this is a buff. This is a buff to rapid-fire pulses. I guess maybe these are, these must be PvP damage numbers, right? Yeah, I guess so. So hitting headshots with your pulse, so rapid fires are getting a pulse, a buff, high impact pulses now deal 21, 20, okay, so these are PvP damage numbers, by the way, because that's what they were saying at PAX is that this number 20 went up to 21 and 32 went up to 33, so that's good. <clears throat> And at times, I guess this could possibly, because of the weird, the way rounding works, I guess this will always say 33 on your screen. However, I think that they're changing some of that stuff. So just know that your rapid fire pulses got a really nice buff. Uh, they got like a two damage headshot buff, almost three it looks like. And high impact pulses got a buff, both in PvP. And then your, your middle ones like Last Perdition and stuff like that, and... Uh, blast furnace and stuff. I guess those didn't get changed. So scout rifles. PV damage increased between 36 and 18 percent, depending on combatant rank. Okay. Sidearms PVE damage increased to minor and major combatants by 16 percent. Okay. These were neither of these seem to be getting a lot of love in PVE, so these are good solid buffs. Sniper rifles. PVE damage increased by 47 percent. Against minor enemies. Okay, that doesn't matter too much, I guess. Uh, and 20% for others. Okay. So, it was kind of... I mean, the meta's kind of established itself as a mountaintop and a recluse meta. And then... Shotguns were still pretty viable. You know, one-two punch shotguns are really, really strong. So this is overall probably pretty good considering legendary snipers have really not found a really good home in Destiny 2 PvE, whereas in Destiny 1, sniper rifles, legendary snipers were always great to have in your inventory um, for boss damage. So exotic sniper rifle perk damage bonuses have been modified to compensate for this change and they will not receive the full benefits as a result. So... Darcy and Whisper of the Worm won't receive the same crazy damage buff because they have damage bonus perks within them, um, like Whisper of the Worm and stuff. Some machine guns. PvE damage increased by 22.5% against minor and major combats. Recluse just got stronger? Aggressive frame. Remove the intrinsic effect of deals bonus damage at close range. This bonus was 10%, but was unintentionally always active. The bonus damage has been moved to the base damage for 750 round per minute submachine guns, resulting in no damage change. As a result, Teraba and the Huckleberry gained 10% damage in both PvE and PvP. Huckleberry is actually a really underrated SMG, um, mainly because it's an exotic but if you have the catalyst, you like never have to reload this thing. So the fact that it's getting a damage buff, really, really solid. Okay, we're back. Sorry about that. I had to blow my nose. Um, okay, so these all seem okay. Uh, that wasn't. Hmm. Let's keep going. But this is this is good. And there there are some concerns I'm gonna get to at the end of this. But let's get through it all. Sweet business. 
increased its max size <laughs> and increased PvE damage. So does Sweet Business get this damage buff and this damage buff? That would be nuts. Oh my god, that would be so cool. High caliber rounds have been emplaced with armor piercing rounds. Okay. Damage change to 15 and 20. Oh, 15 and 20. Oh, this is a barely an increase. The body shot damage in PvP is a little bit higher now, so that's decent. This weapon no longer requires you to be firing when you pick up ammo to have it automatically reload. This thing auto reloads itself? Wait, this thing's just gonna auto reload itself now? You're never gonna have to. As long like when you pick up ammo, you're just it's gonna auto reload. Okay. Graviton Lance, PvE damage increased by 30%. I don't know how much this is gonna do. Um generally this isn't like a huge uh generally this isn't a very used gun a lot, so it'll be interesting. Sunshot increased mag size to twelve. This'll be just a shitload of fun and actually could be decent in Crucible with the larger mag size. Vigilance Wing, PvE damage increased by 30, 25%. That's a good buff. Crimson. Okay, everyone has been talking about how this gun just got left in the dirt and in the past, so that's unfortunate. Damage changed to 19 and 30. Oh my... Holy crap! This is huge! Fix an issue that was causing this weapon to deal higher flinch than intended. Um, this is nuts. I'm sorry, I just ate before this. This was a bad idea. This is crazy. What? Okay, uh, this is, this part, I guess, like, less flinch, but no one's using the gun anyway, so who really, who really knew about the flinch? Damage changed to 19 from 13. That's plus 6. And 24 to 30. Wow. You're just gonna hit super hard. I wonder if you could tuber someone with this. I mean, if you hit all heads, that's 180. That's close. You're really close to two bursting someone with a full mag. Merciless. Fix the missing aim assist. Okay. Uh, Ace of Spades. Momentum's Mori damage bonus is now affected by range fall off. Okay, so this was a thing. Momentum Mori actually increased the range of the hand cannon. Um... So that you could shoot Memento Mori bullets from super far away. So this is a good change. Just brings in Ace of Spades as a really dominant hand cannon on PvP. Uh, Lumina. Noble Rounds should apply their buff to allies more reliably now. I would have liked to see Noble Rounds be able to apply to you. Because right now in solo play, you can't really do it. I don't think you can do it at all. Colony. Serve the Colony now functions as auto-loading holster does. I don't know what this perk does, but now you're going to be able to auto-load your colony. I don't think that matters, and in, in, in this thing's only being used in PvP occasionally, and um, when it's being used, you don't get a lot of heavy ammo from the, uh, from, you don't get a lot of ammo from the heavy bricks to really affect your, I mean, there's nothing in your reserves to auto-reload, so. Alright, so these are just, uh, these are... PV, or these are weapon, uh, legendary weapon perks, essentially. So, perks. Subsistence. Reduce the impact of this perk on total reserves. So you're going to have more ammo in your reserves, and this gun reloads when you... Is it when you hit things, or when you kill things? I think it's when you kill stuff, so that's pretty good. Ricochet rounds. Remove the hidden bonus to damage fall off. There's, so, this gun give This ricochet rounds gives, like, a base 5 increase to range, and then it also used to give... Um, a, like, hidden buff to range as well to make it even stronger. They got rid of that hidden buff. So now it's just plus five to range. Interesting. So Accurized Rounds is going to be really good on guns that you can get both. So Accurized Rounds over Ricochet right now. Swashbuckler perk now activates when getting a kill with Ball Lightning. I think that's the thing from the Warlock. Um, so that's a, that's a good buff. Just make it more consistent across the board. Make it so Middle Tree Warlocks can actually use Swashbuckler effectively. Grave Robber. Perk now activates when getting a kill with ranged melee abilities. Wait. Grave Robber. Perk now activates when getting a kill. Oh, so like ball lighting and throwing knives. So these two didn't react to... Or this one reacted to throwing knives, but not ball lighting. This one just didn't react to ranged melees at all, so that's good. 1-2 Punch. This is an interesting one. This is like the highest DPS... One of the highest DPS uh, perks in the game. 
Reduce the effectiveness of stacking one, two, punch, and cross counter. Okay, so on everything but a hunter, you're going to maintain some damage. That's good. Example, players won't be able to defeat Riven in less than three seconds after Shadow Keep launches using the combo of one, two, punch, and Liar's Handshake. But we know many of you will try other builds and potentially even succeed. That's pretty good. Also, if you want to do your Riven solo kills, do it before Shadow Keep launches. <laughs> Bungie's got a good sense of humor with this one. I like that. Uh, we'll see who wrote this, but that's pretty. That's that's a good thing. Uh, so basically, Liar's Handshake and Cross Counter made it so you could stack melee damage, and then like outload all that melee damage with one two punch. That's a good nerf in my opinion. Makes it so that other classes can use one two punch effectively versus just hunters using it to dominate everything. So we still have a few TWABs before the release of Shadowkeep, which will shore up our patch notes and previews on a variety of topics, ranging from Black Armory access to bug fixes. Stay tuned. I don't know what this means, but is that all for the patch notes? Say something, Husky happens on Mars. Okay, yeah. So who wrote the DMG? Yeah, that's good DMG. Uh, I, got, I got a good laugh. I got a good laugh from this. So let's just go through this reckoning one more time. Destiny Update 2.5.2.2 .2 recently brought some frequently requested quality of life changes to Reckoning and Rewards. Next week we'll be making an additional change to the experience, further bridging the gap between you and your desired rewards. Starting on September 17th, all negative modifiers will be removed from Reckoning. This activity will continue to feature a weekly singe with a daily rotation of Brawler, Grenadier, and Heavyweight. Awesome, so Reckoning just got easier, which is probably good for such a crappy matchmade activity. In turn, like I'm just saying the matchmaking for that activity is really bad. I don't know why it's like that, but it is. Our goal in this change is to improve the replay ability of Reckoning, so players will feel more inclined to hop into the matchmaking for some sweet loot. This should also help to address some feedback items from players that specific modifiers could feel to punishing. We're looking at you, Blackout Dark Blades. So, this was a problem when you had Blackout and the Dark Blades active at the same time. You got one shot by those guys, and it was not a fun experience. If you're looking to get your hands on some weapons from Season of the Drifter that have eluded you, I reckon this is your time to shine. Alright. I'm not going to go through the hotfix stuff just because um, this is all just like really minor bugs and really minor stuff that's not a huge deal um for the next several weeks game out and Disney 2 silver can no longer be purchased from the battle net shop existing PvP players can continue to play until we migrate additionally every existing PC player should be aware that in order for recent silver purchases to be transferred to steam players must log in D2 on battle net before October 1st to claim their purchase silver okay so that's just some silver prings, steam linking, migration for the next several weeks in preparation for migration. Okay, so there's just some migration stuff. Movie of the week, I'm not going to watch these. Um, okay, so this is pretty interesting. Um, obviously, they didn't talk about exotic armor at all. Which is kind of concerning. Um, for example, why isn't there a one eyed mask here at all? Where's our one eyed mask nerf? And then I know they weren't going to touch grenade launchers for PvE, but like, where are the grenade launcher nerfs for PvP? Also, I'm going to probably have to delay the video I've been talking about that I want to produce because I was expecting exotic armor changes to be in this patch. However, they are not. So, with that in mind, we'll probably upload this Friday and then uh, the next upload will probably be on Monday after that. Possibly. Stay tuned. So, hope you guys enjoyed. These are all pretty good. I like how many PvE buffs there were. I like how nothing got wrecked, but in terms of Crucible, I mean, Recluse isn't on here. Mountaintop isn't on here. 
grenade launchers in general aren't on here. Um, especially special weapon grenade launchers, especially ammo grenade launchers. Uh, this is concerning. However, hopefully, I mean, I... The fact that the, the exotic armor stuff doesn't really bother me too much, because obviously that's not in here, and they're going to nerf and touch exotic armor at some point before Shadowkeep. But the fact that there's no grenade launchers on here, like, what on earth is going... Are we going to have to go through another season of, like, mountaintops, malicious birthrights, and recluses? Like, that's a little bit worrisome for PvP... Uh, yeah, those are my thoughts. This is a really long video. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you in another one. Bye.